Podcast. Another beautiful day of weather in Oakland and all around the Bay Area. And it's a nice night for baseball here at the O.Co. Coliseum. Trevor Cahill is taking them on. Trevor Cahill looking for his ninth win of the year. He'll be opposed by Felix Hernandez. So a great pitching matchup for game two of this three-game series. The A's trying to even it up with a win. It's the Mariners and the Athletics coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Marquee pitching matchup. We like those. They're fun to watch. Cahill and Hernandez. Hernandez, an all-star last couple years. Cy Young. Trevor Cahill, an all-star last year. So this should be another pitcher's duel. Different style of pitching. Of course, Felix Hernandez can throw the ball hard, but I like the way that Trevor Cahill pitches because he uses all of his pitches. Same as Felix Hernandez, but when Trevor Cahill is on, he will throw the sinker. He'll throw the two-seam fastball. He'll throw a curveball. Change up is outstanding. If he does not try to overthrow the baseball, he gets the movement that he wants. He can get strikeouts when he needs them. He'll also get ground ball outs, which double figures for him and ground ball outs. Perfect. King Felix Hernandez, of course, he won the Cy Young Award last year, winning just 13 games. His ERA was unbelievable. He just dominated the American League. This young man can pitch. He will throw off-speed pitches in fastball counts. He gets a lot of movement. He does not get a lot of run support, similar to Trevor Cahill. But the one thing he does do, he will pitch strong as the game progresses. Yeah. If you don't get him early, you may not get him late. So it should be definitely a great pitching matchup tonight. A's have seen him twice this year, including opening night. Yeah. He has beat the A's both times, 11-4 and four in his career against the Athletics. And we're also looking at Hideki Matsui sitting on 499 career home runs. Does he get to 500? We'll find out tonight. Brought to you by AT&T and by Toyota. Check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. 
Beautiful night for baseball as the A's take the field for game two of this three-game series. A's hosting the Seattle Mariners. Trevor Kale and the Athletics going with the green tops tonight as they try to even up this series at a game apiece with the Mariners winning last night or yesterday. Two to one game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. 76 degrees, so another warm, comfortable night at the ballpark. And we're hoping for a good ball game, an ace win, and two very good pitchers on the mound, Cahill and Felix Hernandez. So Ichiro Suzuki will hit in that customary leadoff spot for the Mariners. Let's look at the rest of that Seattle lineup set out by their manager, Eric Wedge. Ichiro and then Brendan Ryan, the shortstop. Adam Kennedy at third. Justin Smoke, big game yesterday. He'll be at first. Dustin Ackley, the young second baseman. Miguel Olivo is in there tonight. Carlos Peguera is in left. Franklin Gutierrez in center. Greg Holman is in right. Here's your Mariners lineup. Jeff Cahill making the start for the Athletics, and he is on the mound for the 19th time this year, and he has done a very good job for the Athletics overall. He'd like to win tonight, and he'll pitch again Sunday and go into the All-Star break, a 10-game winner. Hopes that's the case. The Athletics hope that's the case as well, but he just needs to use all of his pitches, which Bob Melvin has seen him do, especially against the Giants and the Phillies, not so much against the Marlins in his last start. Here's the ace defense for tonight. Sweeney is in left. Crisp in center to Jesus in right. Sizemore, Pennington, Weeks, Jackson on the infield. And Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. So Cahill has finished his warm-up tosses, and we are set to go. Another divisional matchup for the A's. Two starts for Trevor against Seattle. He's given up just one run, but his first start, as you mentioned, he struggled here. Fifth inning, he was out. 105 pitches. For trouble against the Mariners on opening night here at the Coliseum. The A's lost the game. First pitch. A couple of hits yesterday for each hero. And the changeup drops in there. It's one and one. Cahill's other start was up in Seattle. And he got the win going six innings. That was on the 23rd of April. So. A win and a no decision. Again, a no decision in that home opener, even though he, as Ray said, did not get out of the fifth inning. Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire, does not like the high strike. The 1 1 pitch a little bit up. That is Andy Fletcher behind the plate and the rest of the crew. Pennington has it. Throws it in time. Ichiro's retired. Usually with Ichiro, they play a couple steps in, and Pennington did that. He had tonight's Dodge Charger keys to the game. Of course, to try to conquer King Felix, last year's American League Cy Young Award winner, 2 0, with a 108 earn run average against the Athletics this year. And of course, 11 career wins against the A's, most against any team in the offense. Southpaw success. Six lefties in the lineup tonight. Try to do your best against one of the best. In the American League, maybe all of baseball, Felix Hernandez. Here's the shortstop, Brendan Ryan, who takes a strike. Ryan stolen base yesterday, and it was a straight steal. We saw him going straight for the bag. Just so happened, Justin Smoke got a ball to hit down the right field line, drove him in, and that was the game winner. Not a lot of offense yesterday, two to one, and you would not expect a lot tonight. Just nine hits in that game yesterday total. Only three for the Athletics. Adam Kennedy will be next just underway from the O.Co Coliseum. The Mariners are 42 and 43 so they. Are looking at a chance to get back to the 500 mark. They are 17 and 20 on the road 25 and 23 at home. That one's driven deep center field crisp racing back he's not going to get it. Up the base of the wall and Ryan has a double Coco was shaded a little bit toward right center. And that made the run a lot longer. He just couldn't get it. So Ryan with the double. Well, the 2 1, very aggressive. And this is what the Mariners are trying to do under Chris Chambliss, their hitting coach. Do that to lift the front foot, get the foot down, and be aggressive with the swing, especially in a fastball count. Ryan was not homered, came close, ball off the bottom of the wall. But that's an aggressive swing. And 
I saw Kurt Suzuki yesterday do it on a 2 1 fastball. But not seeing a lot, and that definitely tonight, from the Mariners' standpoint, something they'd like to see. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy rolls one toward Jackson, plays it off his chest, and gets it to Cahill, and Kennedy's retired. Ryan goes to third with two outs. Adam Kennedy with the uppercut swing, and really not that difficult of a play for Connor Jackson. The ball just came up, used his midsection, knocked it down, did not panic, and as he is taught, all pitchers are taught, the ball hit to the right side, you always go to first base to cover. Connor Jackson, even though he booted the ball, his pitcher was there to take the throw. Just when you hesitate and you don't get there, that's when it looks bad. So, unfortunately, they played it perfectly. So, here's the cleanup hitter, Justin Smoke. First pitch strike to Smoke. A couple of doubles and the RBI yesterday. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball, 0 and 2. We got a first pitch curveball, took it for a strike, then maybe he thought he's going to get a fastball because he's throwing another curveball in the dirt. Let's see if he gets another one. Gets a fastball that stays high, one and two. Two and three in his career against Seattle. His eighth start. Made four starts against him in 09, just one last year. And this is his third this year. Swing and a miss. So Cahill. Gets out of the jam, strikes out Smoke. Ryan is stranded at third. To the bottom of the first weeks, size more crisp. Matsui Jackson to Jesus, Suzuki, Sweeney, and Pennington. Phoenix Hernandez on the mound for the Mariners. His 19th start also. He has won eight. He's lost seven. The 335 earned run average. He is a four pitch pitcher. The amazing thing about him, his changeup is thrown almost as hard as his fastball. But it looks like a splitter. A very difficult pitch to hit. A Upper 80s, low 90s with a change up. Looks like a two seam fastball, but it's an amazing pitch that he throws anytime, any count. And the first pitch is lined by Weeks into center field. Ryan made a good effort, could not come up with it. 
So the first time Weeks has seen Hernandez, the first pitch he's ever seen from him. He's got a base hit. Mariners defense. Figueroa, Gutierrez, Holman in the outfield, Kennedy, Ryan, Ackley, Smoke on the infield, Olivo behind the plate. Well, I think set it all in our open. The fact that Felix Hernandez may struggle early. He may have, as they say, a hiccup early in the game, but as the case, the opening night, second through the seventh, retired, actually faced the minimum, basically. Settled down after the two-run home run to Josh Willingham. That was in the first inning, and yeah. then he had a complete game. Yeah. One five to two. Trevor Cahill did not get a decision. His second start against the A's this year was on the 21st of April. Seven and two thirds shutout baseball. With eight strikeouts, he threw 126 pitches that night. That game was in Seattle. Jamal Wicks doing a very good job. Don't try to pull a pitch that's down. In this case, down. He just inside out. Nice swing as the ball towards the out outer part of the plate. Right back up the middle. 126 pitches for Felix. He threw 73 strikes in that second game. That's a changeup. And that's. So Rich Harden's change up on Friday. Of course, he has a great one about 86 87, but Phoenix can go anywhere from 87 91 with the change up. Rich Harden, a great first start Friday. Harden will pitch in that big series in Texas coming up this weekend. In fact, he's going to get the Game one assignment on Thursday night. Weeks is running, pitches outside, throw to second is late. He slid off the bag and he's out. We've seen him do that before, Ray. Sliding off the bag, but this time they held the tag and they got Weeks. Well, we have seen him when he has slid, whether it's a third base or second, he starts his head first slide late. Got a tremendous jump, but. I mean, Oliva had no chance, but look how late he slides, and in momentum, there's just no way you can keep your foot on the bag. And the one guy who was the best, Ricky Henderson. He knew where to start his slide, and I'm sure Ricky has been working with Jamal Weeks. But there's the lateness of the slide. Well, that Throw, is late. Oh yeah, way off line, and just trying to keep his foot. But Ryan, a good job keeping his tag on. Strike three call to Sizemore, so boy, just like that, two outs. Well, usually when an infielder has starts pushing him, pushing him, and right there as he got the heel, pushed him off a little bit. But that's the smartness of a player, an infielder, holding the tag, and if you can push him off a little bit, you might as well do it. Coco back to back games. Did it at second base. Slid. He had two more as he was safe, but both times slid past the bag. One and one to Coco Crisp hitting 266. Toward the first baseman smoke. He's got it. Side retired. He's get the hit. Weeks caught stealing. No score after one.
to shave their heads or color their hair green and gold. That's green and gold. With a Supercut stylist, we'll receive a free field level ticket courtesy of Supercuts. Buzz cuts start at 11.05 a.m. and are limited to 100 fans. Then Kuiper, first in line. Buzz cut. <laughs> I said, my hair is leaving on its own. I don't need any help. <laughs> That's the set. Ackley with a base hit to left field. So Dustin Ackley takes a rip at the first pitch here in the second inning. He's got a base hit. Buzz cut day. Wow. Is that six. popular in the 80s? I don't know. Number 30, Miguel Olivo. See, MC Hammer. It's kind of a semi buzz. I guess it was, yeah. Buzz on the side. Let it grow on the top. See, you may be a little bit older than me, but you got a, maybe you got a good head of hair, man. Maybe. <laughs> Silver Fox sitting next to me here. Yeah. Care what color it is, just as long as <laughs> you it's know what? That's a good call. <laughs> That's a good call. Oh, and one to Miguel Olivo. Ooh, quick throw to first. Good throw might have had him. Actually, looked like he was heading towards second base, or at least leaning that direction. Actually, has a pretty good lead. Kind of has that Sean Figgins lead where he almost pivots his feet a little bit towards second base. Sean would like to get out there and show us just how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> On the bench again tonight. Kind of has his body shifted that way, maybe more so than his feet. It's Mike Brumley, the first base coach. Jeff Dats, third base coach, giving the signs. It's not a good number. Trevor's got a very good move, quick, not only to first base but also to the plate. Slide step. The name Dave on the right sleeve of the Mariners player, of course, Dave Niehaus, longtime broadcaster, which we passed away this offseason. It's a little different seeing the Mariners oh. this year without seeing Dave around. He seems, especially there, such yeah. a legendary right. figure when you're up at Safeco Field. Well, they've got the rotation of about its seven announcers working with Rick Riz on radio. Ken Wilson, a yeah. former A's broad broadcast partner of mine, and said hi to Ken today. Yeah. In the dirt, Ackley thought about going but stays at first. Wilson called the perfect game for Kenny Rogers in Texas. Really? Yeah, he had the call. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned, Trevor Cahill got a strikeout, a smoke, a big one in the first inning. Also, a ground ball pitcher looking for a double play here. Good candidate, no level. One thing about Trevor, he gets the ground ball outs when he throws his natural sinker. When he doesn't try to overthrow it. That one runs high, and that may have been an example right there, Ray, where he just reaches back for a little extra. Because it's probably almost counterproductive. So the count now full to Olivo. See if Ackley goes this time. Probably will. He is not. Fouled on the right field line. That was surprised he was not running. And Trevor did quick pitch a little bit, although Ackley, had he been on the move, would have gone anyway. But Trevor Cahill is a ground ball pitcher. And usually the ground ball pitcher, he starts to run and try to stay out of a double play. This time he is running. Swing and a miss. Throw to second is high into center field. And that's going to allow Ackley to get up and go to third. And Kurt Suzuki was affected by the swing of Miguel Olivo. If you watch this replay and you watch Olivo swing and miss, all Kurt Suzuki had to do is make contact. Fell across the plate. 
He ducked but fall into him because Oliva was on the plate. Watch as he follows through with his swing. See where Suzuki is? He had to throw over him, and as a result, threw the ball high into center field. When a hitter is over the plate, you just make contact, and it's an out. I see the home plate umpire giving a safe sign because there was no contact. Mm -hmm. Did see one call where just with the hitter going across the plate, he interfered with the catcher, even though no contact was made and interference was called. But in this case, Andy Fletcher did not see contact. But it's a perfect time to do it. Just try to fall into the hitter. Good pitch there, and the count is one and one to Carlos Piguero. Uh, really going up, trying to bring it down, jumped oh. over Ackley. <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> Big swing by Piguero, rolls it foul, infield in. You know, the impressive part about Jamal Wicks getting him up makes you wonder just how high the throw was. If he was up that high, he <laughs> still didn't true, catch it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you want to play one on one with him. No. Uh, fastball inside. Well, you see his left foot as he is up to the left shoulder of Ackley, and that's his, his right foot. Sorry, I knew it was one foot. That was his right. Again inside, so now full count. Franklin Gutierrez is the on deck hitter. Payoff pitch is drilled down the right field line. It is foul. Banged off the wall. Here's our Home Depot doing more on defense. This was weeks yesterday, Rain. He's got some good skills around the bag. Uh, he's got a great arm. He's very, very quick. This is one of the best plays here with a throw down from Sizemore, yet came across the plate after catching it and completed the double play. Another 3 2 pitch, and this one's hit the shallow left. Sweeney coming in. He's got it. Ackley's going to try, and the throw is just a bit late. Shade late, shade offline, and Ackley scores. So Pagero gets the sacrifice fly. Now Ryan Sweeney, a very strong arm set up perfectly. Just a couple of steps, but the ball tailing. But it's like no, a running. sinker ball Not pitcher, left-hander, and Suzuki trying to go right back to the plate as he did Piero. yesterday. Trying to make the tag. Just a little bit late. Went after by Kurt Suzuki. You know, the Mariners grab a 1-0 lead here in the second inning. There's Franklin Gutierrez. Center fielder. Nobody out. Rudder does not attempt to, to score, but one out. You often see, and not surprising to see, Jeff Dett send the runner. Backhands the one hopper. Side retired. Sacrifice fly for Piguero, and that gets the Mariners on the board. One nothing in Seattle.
Friday home games through mid-September and receive a two-for-one field level ticket voucher. Wells Fargo and the Oakland A's teaming up to make a difference in our local schools. Schools Supply and Drive, always appreciated here on Friday night. Next Friday would be a week from Friday when the A's return from the All-Star break to host the Angels from Anaheim. So shit the boys. Be the beginning of a four-game weekend series starting Friday with a doubleheader of Saturday. And a single game Sunday. A rare, regularly scheduled double play. Angels and the Rangers tied atop the AL West coming into tonight's action. We'll be updated on what they are doing. Matsui rolls one to second. So Matsui is retired, and that is out number one. Now the Rangers are currently <laughs> leading the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles four to two in the eighth inning. And the Angels are just underway at home against the Tigers. No score in the second inning. Texas was trailing two to one. They scored three runs in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Rangers and Angels sitting on top. Mariners just two and a half back. And again, the Mariners one game under the 500 mark. The A's seven back, 10 under. So would you call the Mariners a surprise team this year? Probably a little bit. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that was 61 and 101 last year. So yeah, I think so. Well, I think uh, ought to be said before this past Sunday, they'd used just five starters all season. Mm -hmm. Eric Wedge, first year manager, first year of a three year contract. No nonsense, basically he tells it like it is. And, and you can tell Ichiro Suzuki you're Second of games played streak is going to end at about what, 265. Mm -hmm. Toting, sat him. Sean Fig has been struggling, sat him. Out up Ackley. Smoke is playing first. And Pitch in the dirt. Jackson swings and misses. And they are very similar to the A's. Very good pitching, but not a lot of offense. But find a way to score just enough. This is the hard changeup. Connor Jackson swinging at the delivery, and the ball was in the dirt. Caught by O'Leary. The Mariners had the worst record in the American League last year, second worst record in the major leagues. Only the Pittsburgh Pirates were worse. So they are coming off a 101 loss season. So they're going to have a huge improvement, whatever this 2011 season brings. But right now, they're in a pennant race, just two and a half back in the West. De Jesus rolls one foul. I think from the A standpoint, it would have been nice to see what they could have done. Had Jamal Weeks been safe at second, he was safe, but overslid the bag, and that was with nobody out. Maybe could have put a run on the board in the first inning. That was not the case, and King Phoenix has his run. After pitching last year, winning 13, losing 12 with the best ERA and very dominated throughout the American League, he realizes he may not get a lot of run support. Do you think pitching with lack of run support? I've seen it with the A's. Mariners are an example. Giants across the bay, an example. Do you think it's good for a pitcher? I mean, can it help them in the long run? Uh, in the long run, it's always going to help, but in the long run, too, it's going to make you realize that every pitch is critical. I think Brandon McCarthy yesterday, as brilliant as he was, he made what two bad sure. pitches. You know, got a ball up to smoke, got a ball up to catcher, and Bart This is two to one. So there's no doubt if you're pitching, let's say you have a two or three run lead, you say, okay, I make a mistake, I give up a solo home run, it's only one run. Yeah. I give up a, a hit and run, it's only one run, but when you only have one run and one run is, is big, then that's what makes it very difficult. Swing and a miss. So a couple of strikeouts for Hernandez as he retires the A's in order in the second.
brought to you by Zookeeper in theaters July 22nd. one nothing. the Mariners lead, and it is the top of the third inning from the Coliseum. Stomper go to the zoo. Is he is part of Zuki. At one time he was, but now I think he's probably got a place to stay somewhere out behind that big green door. Be a cot out there. I think if he'd have been here in the 70s, he could have bunked up with Charlie. The, Charlie O. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with that. Well, one. no, I mean, you know, the mule and the elephant, you know, kind of stables. Pennington waits for the hop and then throws out home. Going oh, blessed with a strong arm, you can make a play like that. He ended up getting on the back foot, but okay, he'll get in the ground ball to Cliff Pennington. Watch he just flat foot on the back foot pushes off and a strong throw to Connor Jackson getting home. And so we've seen Cliff Pennington with Petro Suzuki, who's hitting now. Kind of charged the ball a little bit, set himself, and made the strong throw. So yeah. We have the batting stance guy in the stands tonight. We've also got different styles of playing shortstop, and we've seen it from Cliff Pennington tonight. The batting stance guy. Ichiro slaps with the left. Sweeney comes charging in, but he's going to have to play it on a hop. So that's hit number three for the Mariners. Ichiro has done this for about 11 years now. now. Lifts the leg and just slaps the ball as he's Brandon running to first base. Ryan. He will make contact more times than not. Ryan Sweeney playing shallow, thought about, but the ball was sinking a little bit too quickly. So one out hit for Ichiro. How many hits is that for Ichiro this year? He has got 97. So not yet to 100. We're always past the halfway mark. So he'll have to have a not a huge second half, but his average will have to climb a little bit if he's to get to that 200 hit mark like he does every year. He's capable. Yeah, betting against him would be a really bad idea. Hitting 274 coming into tonight's game, he got the one for two. Lots of Japanese media in this series, of course, with Matsui and Ichiro. Pennington has it. He'll step on the bag. He'll throw to first, and that's an inning ending double play. So he had the bottom of the third. It'd be Suzuki, Sweeney, and Pennington. One nothing Seattle.
All-Star game. Bottom of the third inning, it'll be Suzuki, Sweeney, and Pennington. He's had one hit against Hernandez so far. It was a leadoff single by Weeks. He's got three strikeouts. Hayes will be going to Arlington, Texas, and of course the Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan will be there. Seven no hitters at the time he took the mound. They see. I think everybody thought he had a chance to pitch a no hitter. There's a base hit down the left field line. Peguero gets to it, spins around and gets it in quickly, holds Suzuki to a single. And I'm glad Kurt Suzuki got one because after the first batter got a base hit, he'd settled down. This ball, Kurt able to bring his hands in and did not hit it hard, but high enough to get it over Kennedy's head. Ryan Felix Hernandez has that no hit type stuff. That he is capable as well, but Kurt Suzuki, good job, especially getting the hands in as Phoenix tried to get the ball in and either break his bat or get a ground ball, but Kurt elevated it. Here's Sweeney who takes a first pitch strike. 286 with 10 RBIs for Ryan Sweeney. Sweeney has faced Hernandez 27 times. He's got six hits. A lot of the A's have quite a few at bats against Felix Hernandez. And they're going to get a lot more because right now he is under contract with the Mariners, and more likely they will keep him for as long as they can afford him, which probably will be a long time. It's funny, just the last couple of days you've seen, if you read baseball closely, you're seeing a lot of Latin players sign. I guess the international signing date is July 2nd, right? That's when teams can start signing players from other countries, and they have to be 16 years old. Felix Hernandez was 16 years old when the Mariners signed him. Probably at 12.01 a.m. Exactly. <laughs> So Michael, that's Michael Noah. That's uh, yeah, the A sign here. Was, uh, he just turned 16. So that's why Hernandez signed at 16. Take your time with the young man, but now he's in the big leagues. It's in his sixth year, and he's only 25 years old. Yeah. From Venezuela, his contract goes through 2014. Valencia, Venezuela. I played two winters, actually Did three you? winters of baseball in Valencia. Long before Felix ever came into being, but uh, sitting right in the middle of the country. No foul ball, so the count three and two. And no, I didn't speak a lot of Spanish. I went there. <laughs> but you knew how to order a cheeseburger, That's right? right? I didn't know that. That's good. If Suzuki is moving again, he is. And another foul ball. So Kurt's getting a workout. On deck is Cliff Pennington. Question whether Ryan Swin is going to get that 90 mile hour change up. Run, swing and a miss, throw to second base is high, but in time, Suzuki's out. That's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. So, again, just like that, two outs. Well, if there's no contact, there's no contest because Olivo just took his time, a high throw, but knew he had plenty of time. Exactly caught the ball, went back to tag, so it's a strike him out, throw him out, caught standing two to four. Something the A's had hoped they would get with Olivo batting. But that was not the case, and Mariners end up scoring a run. First pitch to Pennington in the first try. Right? 
still have to like and appreciate what Bob Melvin did putting the runner in motion. As the hitter Ryan Sweeney knows his job is to make contact might have been out of the strike zone. Still have to make contact to avoid the double play. And you know what you got to try to create something Absolutely. against this guy. I mean you're not going to get a lot and getting three consecutive hits off him is probably not going to happen. It may but. So 0 and 2 to Pennington hitting 241 with three home runs. 22 runs batted in. Pennington stays alive. That one at 95 miles an hour and down around the knees. Numbers down a little bit in June for Felix Hernandez. Well, his last six starts, he's gone a win and a loss. Unfortunately, his last start is lost. <laughs> but it's July, by the way. <laughs> Strike out number five for Hernandez. Joyce, Gio Gonzalez, the co-player of the week in the American League, along with Jose Bautista. A couple of starts for Gio, won them both. So, well-deserved. So, your co-player of the week, and you're an all-star. So, that's a good week if you're Gio Gonzalez. It's good to be Gio Gonzalez right now. How about that? Put away the bat, though. You're finished, Gio. Even though you're playing in the all-star game in the National League Park, you will not hit. On one to Adam Kennedy. Another honor for an A today. Jamal Weeks was named the co-rookie of the month for June. Co-rookie of the month in the American League, along with Minnesota's Ben Revere. It's all downhill for Jamal. First month in the big leagues. So a couple of awards handed out today for A's players. Cahill strikes out Kennedy looking for his third K. Yeah, big two seamer, right? No, no, no. The plate started at Kennedy. He bailed just enough, couldn't pull the trigger, and in the dirt, hoping that he would get a call in his favor. Did not work. Smoke takes high. The Rangers have just won their game. Naftali Feliz came in to save it. So Texas beats Baltimore four to two. Big chopper toward Pennington who moves to his right and guns it across. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. All right, here's the answer to tonight's AT&T trivia question. Who was the first rookie to hit 30 home runs before the All-Star break? 
couple people in the booth yelled out, Mark McGuire. <laughs> so we had a feeling it was Big Mac. He hit his 30th 24 years ago tonight, and he would hit 33 home runs before the All-Star break. It was 1987. Pretty impressive numbers for a rookie. 289, 49, 118, and I still think the most impressive thing about Big Mac was on the final day of the season in Chicago. He left town to be home for the birth of his son Matthew. So he had a chance to get to 50 and he played that final game, but something that you don't experience a lot in his birth of your first child, and so he went home and Matthew was there when Big Mac hit the home run. He was standing uh, home plate and he lifted him high. I bet he's not lifting him now. Uh, no. Let's see, Matthew would be 24 years old. Yeah, he's big boy. <laughs> you could see that he was big, big thing. <laughs> he was a big little guy. Yeah. Late 90s. Exactly. Toward Connor Jackson, who will take it himself. But Cahill has a three up, three down inning. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It'll be the top of the order for the A's. It's time for Oakland. Starring Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. It's in theaters July 22nd, and it's rated R. Bottom of the fourth inning. The A's will try to get something going against Felix Hernandez. He's got five strikeouts in the first three innings. The A's have a couple of hits off him. It'll be Weeks, Sizemore, and Crisp. Uh, Trevor Cahill's doing his job matching Felix Hernandez. Had a line drive to center field for a hit. His first at bat. Angels with a one nothing lead over the Tigers in the third inning. That's Justin Verlander for Detroit. He's 11 and three against Danny Heron. The Angels, who have won nine out of their last 11, have got a runoff Verlander. Angels. One last night, five to one. Breaking ball and Weeks swings and misses, and that is strikeout number six. And it goes second round to the batting order. Goes to the curveball, fastball that Jamal Weeks hit for a base hit. And Frank Shannon probably said that's the last fastball you'll see for a while. It was a four-seamer, and then he threw the curveballs. 
Those guys are all all stars. No surprise there. Sizemore on the ground toward Cleveland. That's out number two. You see, all those guys are all stars and Verlander, Verlander, Sabathia, Shields, Hernandez, Lester, Aaron. All those guys are pitching tonight, which means with no off days the rest of the week, they'll pitch Sunday and not one will be eligible to pitch next Tuesday. Well, yeah, Verlander, and Hernandez, and Shields. But the other uh, guys would be filling in. And so you would think they, I mean, Lester, 10 and 4. Yeah, but he left the game tonight, huh? Yeah, he, oh, he had a little pull. I don't know what it was, but he left the game. Strained muscle? Well, then. Yeah, so that. He may not be able to play regardless. So there will be replacements added to the American League because of the guys who are starting tonight. Kane and Hamels also starting tonight in the National League and they are and we say tonight meaning they're that means they're lined up to start on Sunday. And these guys are all all star pitchers so you're going to want to pitch him on yeah. Sunday as well. Two and one to Coco Crisp who bounced out to smoke. To end the first inning. Again, toward smoke. This time he's going to have to flip it to Hernandez, who gets over there. Side retired. Five in a row retired by Felix Hernandez, and we're headed to the fifth. One nothing, Seattle. Hi, fans. Tara here. Stomper and I are getting ready to. Plaza Outfield, our Plaza Reserve ticket for just two dollars. Your great matchups against the Angels, Rangers, Seattle Mariners. That's tomorrow and more while supplies last. Tickets at OaklandAthletics.com slash BART or 877-493-BALL. Well, the series finale, homestand finale, the final home game before the All-Star break. That is all tomorrow. 35 first pitch against the Seattle Mariners. Olivo, Piguero, Gutierrez. It's Trevor Cahill. Cahill's been sharp so far. He's allowed just three hits. The one run, a single, stolen base. Ball went into center field, so Ackley went to third. He scored on a sacrifice fly. Radio only tomorrow on Sports Radio 95.7 FM. Vargas Moscoso, lefty versus righty. Vargas. The five and five record. He's got three shutouts this year, so that will wrap up, as Ray said, the home stand. Weeks getting back there. He makes the catch. One of the second fly ball out recorded by Trevor Cahill. As he has eight ground ball outs tonight. 
Now batting, number eight, Carlos Figueroa. So after the day game tomorrow, the A's will get on the plane, travel to Texas, and there is the game one matchup, Harden and Holland. 4.30, A's pregame live, the ball game at 5. Again, that's a four-game set. Thursday's game is the makeup game due to the rainout. And again, the Rangers won their game tonight at home 4-2. to two. Figueroa wildly swings at a pitch in the dirt, and it's 0-2. That's a great description, wildly. I can say that's the best way to put it. And he wildly swings at 0 and 2 pitch. Suzuki will chase it down. Strike got number four for Cahill. Well, for a great hitter like Chris Chambliss and a great hitting coach, this has to drive him a little bit crazy. Sam, what are you doing? Now <laughs> back to back pitches Franklin. with balls in the dirt. Here. Fortunately, Kurt Suzuki blocked both of them, and especially the 0 2 to throw him out. Yeah, Chris Chambliss was an excellent hitter. Yeah. And he didn't do that very often. And that, but there, I don't know that he ever did it. But I, I think Eric Wedge said it best. They brought him in, Chris Chambliss. There he is. Brought him in because of his patience. And to watch swings like that, you have to have patience. Chamless, maybe one of the greatest home runs ever hit in postseason. It's the Kansas City Royals, a walk off from Bedlam at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. He never touched home plate. <laughs> and he, he, in, he injured about four people oh. getting two home, maybe more than that. I know he knocked a couple guys uh, down. He was a football player in that scene <laughs> after hitting the home run. <laughs> I like watching the replay just recently, they were showing some of the highlights and they had Willie Randolph. As he was the, uh, I guess the blocking guard in front of him, just knocking people out of the way for Chris Chambliss, who knocked his own out of the way. Scary, scary sight. But now in postseason, usually a deciding game, they'll put officers out on horses, lining the uh, warning track. But you think about that, just letting fans just well, run out on the field. I don't think they had much of a choice. <laughs> Three up, three down inning for Cahill. He's retired seven in a row. It's the bottom of the fifth. Coming up, Matsui's going to lead it off. And is among the pitching leaders in the American League since 2006. He has the most strikeouts and the second best ERA. And again, he is just 25 years old. 
What was the contract? Five years? 80 million? Something it's like that? 78, agent. I think it was. Free agent at age 27. Yeah. Thought it was a great uh, interview this spring. I was listening to it, and it's going to be doing the interview. And of course, Felix talked about how happy he is to be in Seattle. Of course, he'd signed a long term contract. And when the interview was finished, and Felix was off mic, he said, Let's see. In December of November of 2014, the New York Yankees <laughs> will be Felix Hernandez. He knows. Uh, he knows there's going to be. Clubs coming after him very, very hard. But Mariners would love to keep him in uniform, their uniform, and his entire career. Peguero into foul territory and right in front of the A's relievers, he makes the catch. So that's out number one here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and here's Connor Jackson. Jackson struck out swinging. That was in the second inning. So Miguel Olivo ready to give the sign. He wants his pitcher to work quickly, gets the ball back to him, and set really quickly with a sign. And boy, you'd like to get the pace. Your pitcher's pitching well. You do not want to slow him down. Give him the sign, let him go. De Jesus in the on deck circle. 2 0 pitch to Connor Jackson is right at the knees on the outside corner. See the stars on the cap and the back of the uniform of Felix Hernandez. The stars on the back of the uniforms of the All Stars. Ted Walsh doing it for the Mariners and making sure the cap's all set. Same for Steve Lucinich on the home side. And Joe Gonzalez. It's a nice touch. Yeah. There they are. Got the All Star. Boy, he's. I don't blame you, Gio. Wear it right now. Big time. He's going to have to wear the gray jersey in the All-Star game because the American League's the visiting team. Kennedy throws out Jackson. Gio would like to wear the gold. I was going to say, yeah. could he sneak the yeah. gold in the trunk? Now, a deserving All-Star, no doubt. Number 12, David DeJesus. And it's just the beginning for great things for Gio Gonzalez. Days who struck out swinging in the second inning. Takes low. That was pitch number 55 for Hernandez, so his pitch count is very good so far. Not necessarily great news for the A's. <laughs> He has not walked anybody. He has struck out six. Now the first two games he pitched this year, 16 and two thirds innings, nine hits, 13 strikeouts. As you always look at the pitching matchups, you say, oh no. Garcia said that a long time ago when Felix first came in the American League. They faced him, they said, Going to be seeing him a lot, and they have. When he starts. And that, you know, that doesn't mean that he, he's great every time out, but Mostly. he's usually <laughs> good, and then, you know, maybe once every three starts, he's really good, <laughs> and you just hope it's not one of those nights. Ooh, that hit the Jesus, and it got him pretty good. Two out base runner. Not a way to get there, though. About a 93 mile an hour fastball just honing in on the. Maybe got the right knee out of the way. It was the left knee. See if he pulls the right knee back. I think you're right, yeah. right. Not quick enough, right. though. Right, Cut yes, but got him off the left knee. And wow. Got his catcher as well. Yeah. 
Could be worthy of a bag of ice or two. Hmm. See how much it really hurts. Steel second. You like the great Jimmy Brown, Jim Brown, the football player of the Browns. You get up like you could <laughs> barely walk. Next thing you know, he's just running over guys. <laughs> like that football reference, don't you? That was good. <laughs> that was good. One and oh to Kurt Suzuki, who had a line single to left. He was leading off the third inning. Good pitch there by Hernandez right on the outside corner. We talked about it before and there's no doubt pitchers with good reputations of uh, being good pitchers and throwing strikes. Anything close better be swinging because more times than not pitchers going to get those close pitches. Bear down. Phoenix does not believe that David's knee is hurting. <laughs> it takes a lot. Man. I'm just going to make sure you're not going to steal. Swing and a miss. So is that the changeup at 89? Yep. Just bottoms out. Yeah. Some pitchers in the past have seen where when they're going to throw an off speed pitch, they will throw to first base a couple of times, try to shorten the lead of a potential base stealer. Good point. Because if he's going to throw that pitch, thinking that he might get a good jump, and he can throw over a couple of times, keep him closer, maybe he won't run him still. And as it turned out, Felix threw the hard change up. And anything other than a, a good fastball, very difficult for a catcher at times to handle and get in a position to throw out a base run. So even one good quick throw to first can help your catcher yeah, out. Yeah. You throw over enough times and the guy keeps diving back, he'll just say, I'm not gonna run, don't even think about it. And some catchers, when they think a guy's gonna be stealing, they call nothing but fastballs because they want the good pitch, and of course that helps the hitter. Sixty five pitches for Hernandez. That ball was supposed to go to a young child. Yeah, what happened down there? He gave it to him? Yeah. That boy, Mike. Good. She eventually got it. Fastball foul back. A good battle here between Suzuki and Hernandez. Kurt can get aboard. Sweeney would hit. He's at least making Hernandez work this inning. Really, the first high pitch inning that he has had. Runner goes. Pitches inside. The throw to second is not in time. A breaking ball. It was close, but it was inside. And De Jesus has a stolen base. Can you see a label how? Long he had it away to get to the ball or get the ball to him with the off speed pitch. So sometimes you pick the perfect one to run on, and Olivo going down to his knee and then quickly throwing the ball into the ground with no chance to throw it out to Jesus. And David going to the outside with the baseman taking the ball in front of the bag. He's looking for the big hit now. 3 2 pitch. Spoiled by Suzuki as he reached for it.
So another payoff pitch. Strike three call. Fastball on the outside corner. Strikeout number seven. And the A's strand the Jesus at second. Welcome back to the Coors Light sixth inning. It's time for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. Coors Light Freeze Cam is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. It's the world's most refreshing beer. Top of the sixth inning from the O.Co. Coliseum, and it's Another pitcher's duel, one nothing Seattle. These two teams, the top two ERAs in the American League. The A's 3.11, the Mariners 3.14. The Mariners run tonight's unearned. Of course, the A's won a game this past week, an unearned run. One to nothing, that was it. Swing and a miss by Holman, and it's 0 and 2. Holman grounded out to Pennington in the third inning. Cahill reaches down and grabs it. He'll underhand. One out. Check out our McDonald's true story for tonight. It's interesting. Ichiro Suzuki's average versus different pitch types. By season. Now, this year, now only then, hitting 274, which is significantly lower than he usually hits. Suzuki. And just look at the difference between 07, 08, 09, and 2010, and this year. Hmm. Hey. Down in every category. Where'd all that information come from? It's amazing. You know what? I did a little research today, yeah. spent about 15 minutes <laughs> in front of the computer today, and I just <laughs> jotted a few things down. No big deal, Ray. I don't want you to think I spent a lot of time. 15 <laughs> minutes max. Don't throw him a cutter. 2007, 2010. But throw him a cutter this year. <laughs> 430, hitting the cut fastball. Well, he's he's going to make contact. I mean, that's bottom line. He's going to swing and a rare for rare thing for him is a walk. Even three and zero. Oh. He hopes you throw a strike three and one. Or three and also he can swing three and one. High strike, two and two. Cahill has retired eight in a row, so he's doing his best to match Felix Hernandez. Two two pitch. And 
that's a base hit. That ball was about not eye high. Yeah. And not only did he get a base hit, he went the other way with it. So Ichiro is two for three. That's an off speed pitch, and he moves a lot and is able to head towards first base. And look, it just kind of guides the ball to left field. Watch this follow through and just guiding it that way. It's amazing the balance that he has when he lifts the front foot and goes back with the weight shift and then forward. Of course, he's been very consistent with that same swing, even though average may be down, different pitches might not be hitting, but he doesn't change a thing. He's four for seven now in this series. And he's the DH tonight, too. I can't recall him DHing in a game that we've seen him play. Not a bad idea. He will not know what to do with the All Star break coming up. Yeah. Having that much time off. I was told that he works out every day regardless. Off days. He's at the park working out. And there he goes. Pitches a strike. The throw is not close. And Ichiro has an easy stolen base. And even a good throw, and it was not a terrible throw, but he got a big jump, had a big lead, and he steals it easily. Look at the lead. Yeah. And then the real big jump. Kurt Suzuki, watch when he catches the ball. And then as he throws it, Ichiro's already three quarters away in the second base. Ichiro now 22 for 26 in steals this year. He may go again. You never know. So two and one to Brendan Ryan. He was doubled and hit into a double play. Adam Kennedy in the on deck circle. Cahill grabs it. Ichiro stays near the bag. So that's out number two. Pretty good base running by Ichiro. You see a lot of guys get caught, headed for third on a play like that. His instincts are so great. He could take off to third stop and get back quickly enough to take a chance and throw back there. You might be safe. Trevor did the right thing looking back and then get the sure out of first base. So here's Adam Kennedy, two outs, runner at second. Kennedy a ground out and a strikeout so far in the ball game. He was 0 for 3 with a walk. In game one of the series. And now 3 0 with smoke in the on deck circle. Kennedy, a veteran player, and that wedge might give him the green light. You know, smoke, another left, he's on the on, in the on deck circle. You're gonna Think about him swinging just a little movement. Not even close. So walk number one for Cahill. The manager, Bob Melvin, is going to come out. Bob Melvin, a very good catcher in his playing days. Of course, manager of the Mariners, one of his teams. Of course, the other team, he just won two of three over the weekend, trying to do the same against this club, a team that he managed back in the early 2000s. But something the catcher might see as a manager. Justin Send pitching coach out, but 
Maybe there's something he wanted to say himself that he has seen. So here is Smoke. He is the best RBI man that the Mariners have. 42 runs batted in with 12 home runs. In there, first time. Strikeout and the ground out to short tonight for Smoke. After his two for three performance in game one. Sure looks like he's going to be a good hitter. Yes, he is. Yeah, that's a, a great trade the Mariners made in getting him. He's going to be their everyday first baseman, switch hitter with power, both sides. His average a little down, 243, but just got the look. So I would think the Mariners are probably thinking, you know what? Smoke at first, Ackley at second. Probably pretty happy about the future. Right side of the diamond, anyways. Those two guys could play together for a long time. You asked about pitching with not a lot of offense. You're looking at it right here. Yeah. Trevor Cahill knows this is an important now. Keep it in a one run deficit with Felix on the mound. Oh. Got him swinging. Big out by Cahill as he has five strikeouts. The Mariners strand a pair. Bottom of the six coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, please rest your attention to the Chance to play the Red Hot Zone. Visit CashCreek.com for details. And by Roaring Camp Railroads. Whether it's a steam train through the Redwood Forest or the beach train to Santa Cruz, Roaring Camp is the ride of a lifetime. RoaringCamp.com. One nothing Seattle. It's Felix Hernandez. The breakdown. Seven strikeouts. Just one fly ball out. 69 pitches through five innings. Well, the first pitch to Ryan Sweeney is a breaking ball that drops in for a strike. Sweeney, Pennington, and Weeks here in the sixth. And now it's on two. Josh Willingham, well, Ray, would he maybe this weekend? Yeah. Maybe. It would be nice yeah. because of playing in Arlington with the stadium where the ball carries well. Ten home runs of Willingham to this point. And that may be wishful thinking yeah. a little bit. I know Bob Melvin said if we get him back before the All Star break, it would be a plus. Exactly. So maybe, but. And maybe wishful thinking. You know, as much as he'd like to come back, he's got to come back. Healthy 100% so he doesn't come back and then end up out longer. But he's missed. I mean, he's oh, yeah. he's a run producer on a team that does not score a lot of runs. 
I mean, you have a, a fourth of the home runs for the team. It says a lot. And two pitches high, way high, two and two. Sweeney with a strikeout in the third. And a strikeout in the sixth. Gibbs, he's trying to get back in the field. This was him earlier today. Now Manning, shortstop, number two, Clint Pennington. It's the Achilles. Yeah. Tonight is in that area, and that's that's a tough part because he can feel great one day and then wake up the next day, and it's bad. But did I read where you you can't get a shot in your Achilles? Yeah. So that yeah. I asked him about that uh, a while back, and he said just can't do it. <laughs> Shoot everything else. <laughs> yeah, well, why not the Achilles? <laughs> Talking about you, John. I only eat so many sunflower seeds, and it's finally time to go to work. Pennington struck out in the third. In that Texas game, Tommy Hunter got the win in relief. Feliz, his 17th save. If you have a two to nothing lead in Arlington, Texas, you better get a lot of great pitching because Rangers can hit and they proved it tonight. Scoring late. He scored three in the bottom of the seventh inning. Last night they had 13 runs and 18 hits. Tonight, four runs and 10 hits and they get the win. Tigers pitching staff gave up 13 in one game, double figures about three games, and fired the pitching coach. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. That's a pretty good club. Yes, it is. Sky to center. Gutierrez over toward left center. He's got it out number two. Tune in for MLS action tomorrow night when Chris Wondolowski and the San Jose Earthquakes take on Chivas USA at the Home Depot Center in Southern California. Our high def coverage begins at 7.30 right here in Comcast Sportsnet, California. So that will be tomorrow night. First pitch to Weeks down around the knees first strike. Got a note from my good friend Monty Moore after yesterday. You kind of mentioned, and he said, "You're right, Ray. I like offense." <laughs> so he's completely turned the TV <laughs> off. Tonight. He said it was 108 in Porterville. He played golf in the morning, but he was watching our game yesterday afternoon in the coolness of his home. And he said, "I prefer more offense." Yeah, so do we. Yeah. So Monty, they're trying, just uh, facing some pretty good pitching. I can picture Monty just going, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need a three spot somewhere. Yeah. Well, especially, nobody likes to see a hitter take fastball strike three. Well, that's frustrating. And, yeah. And Monty, who broadcasts with uh, a lot of very good hitting teams, that's something he did not see very often. Oh, and two to Weeks, who has a single and a strikeout. Grounded hard, but the first baseman has it. Side retired. Three up, three down inning, and we're headed to the seventh. So one nothing, Seattle. Hi fans, I'm sitting in section 215.
Baseball.com to support youth baseball and help make a moment kids will never forget. And by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo is back for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. Still 1-0. Seventh inning. The only run in the game in the second inning. It was an unearned run. First pitch to Ackley is driven to center, and that's hit a long ways, and it is gone. Dustin Ackley goes to straightaway center field, and it's two to nothing. I think the Mariners have found a second baseman for a while. They knew when we get through the system that he was going to be here eventually. Well, he's here, and. He's taking over second base, and this is why a great swing straight away center on a pitch that was up. He was actually out on the front foot, but still showed a lot of upper body strength. And it was this Coliseum ball's not supposed to carry like that. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to get out. I guess you're probably looking at Ackley, not a big guy, not necessarily a home run hitter in his short time in the big league. But a good swing. Very good swing. April, May, maybe <laughs> not, but pretty nice weather here. Well, that makes a big difference, there's no doubt. And yesterday we saw that with Josh Bard hitting a home run. Eric Webb said he was hoping to get up on the wall and got over the wall and thought Jack Cuss ball at the left center was going to be at least up on the wall. It was caught, turned into a double play. So that mistake, of course, the first run unearned, but this one a mistake. Pitch left up. Ackley took advantage of it, and now Trevor trails by two. One and two to Miguel Olivo. Pennington gets the good hop, and that is out number one. So that'll bring up Carlos Peguero. Now batting number eight. Carlos Over in the East, AL East, the Yankees beat the Indians nine to two behind CC Sabathia, who's now twelve and four. Nine runs. They got a nine one game. <laughs> wow. Sabathia had eleven <laughs> strikeouts in seven innings, so he's twelve and four. He's not an all star. So. He's not going to be either. Derek Jeter had a couple of hits. That's big news. Jeter now with 2,996. So he's four away. And they're going to play through this week. So he's well, and then the last four games in New York. Yeah, that's right. He's uh, they're in Cleveland mm -hmm. tomorrow yet, and then the four-game series at Yankee Stadium. So he's got a pretty good chance to do it before the All-Star break. Yankees are playing great. They've won 18 out of their last 24. Granderson hit two. He's got 24 and 25. Boy, what a sensational season he's having. And they got 25 at least the other day that uh, Teixeira hit his 25th, which was number 300. Two and two to Pierre. The Red Sox won three to two over Toronto. John Lester left that game strained left muscle near his shoulder. Well, there's got to be some concern there, but the Red Sox did win 3-2. Very high right field. The Jesus back, still going back near the wall. He staggers, catches it, and falls down. Boy, that ball was way, way up in the air. David lost it. He's pointing to his eyes, and, and I think he may have seen it right as it was coming down because it got up and then. The wind affected by the wind and he may not know where it is right there. He's looking at the wall and then that slide adjustment to his right. And I think as he went down he said a little prayers and thank you because it's right there. And you know if he hadn't caught the ball where he's going to hit it just where Adam Kennedy almost got hit yesterday because of the sun. Right in the head. Smile. Got it all the way. Well that was not a height wise. That was not a normal fly ball. No. That was very very high. Garrow is that pure definition of swing hard. And you might hit it. Hope you hit. If he does. He can try. Wow.
2 and 0 to Gutierrez who has grounded out to second and grounded out to third. And now it's 3 and 0. See all those pitches he's overthrown. So we were talking about earlier. Overthrowing them the pitches outside. Not a lot of movement. He swings that hard to girl he goes to the plate 600 plate appearances swings that hard. He's got to hit. He's got to hit 30 or 40 mistakes right. <laughs> I'd strike out 200 times, but he's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, big swim. Three-one pitch is chopped to Sizemore, who charges, and that'll do it. Dustin Ackley with a home run, his third of the year. So it's seventh inning stretch time. Seattle two and the A's nothing. Explaining just how difficult that fly ball was, but he made the catch, held on. With the A's trailing two to nothing to that man, Felix Hernandez. And Sizemore, Crisp, and Matsui here in the bottom of the seventh inning. First pitch strike. A weak single in the first, a Suzuki single in the third are the two hits for the A's. There has been one hit batter that was De Jesus. So three base runners for the A's. One of them was caught stealing. Two of them were caught stealing. Sizemore with a strikeout and a ground out. Another game in that AL East. The Twins beat the Rays three to two. Baker over the All Star Shields. So Tampa Bay loses a game. They're now five back. The Red Sox stay a game and a half of New York. A game and a half back of New York. I don't think you want to fall too far behind the Yankees and the Red Sox. That is a well, the Mariners celebrating their 10th anniversary of the big season in 20 2001 116 wins. He's 102. Second place wild card behind by 14. Yeah. <laughs> by 14. yeah won the wild card. Playing for second all season long and. 
on the wild card in the very tough America League. That's doing something. Strike three called. Good breaking ball. And that is strikeout number nine for Hernandez. Well, all you can do is just buckle your knees, tip your hat, go back to the dugout and say, wow, what a great pitch. Number four, Coco. There's your knee buckler. And Last three strikeouts called the third strike. Hernandez jumps ahead in the count of Coco Crisp. He's been ahead a lot tonight. Ziegler throwing for the A's. Pitches now for Felix Hernandez. That's a good breaking ball. Breaks a lot. It's sharp. It's late, and it's a strike. And unlike Michael Pineda, we saw yesterday only four times exceeding the 100 pitch mark. Felix Hernandez is not in that category. Pineda pitched six innings yesterday. Stayed, stayed around long enough. He got the win. Well, Willis' his pitching coach said about 170 innings this year. That they would get out of him, and of course, monitoring his pitching, and they are looking forward to the All Star break. As you mentioned yesterday, trying to maybe get some extra time for some pitchers. Coco staying alive as he bounces that one foul. That he's just trying to put the bat on and stay alive, get a better pitch to hit. A couple of ground outs tonight for Chris, both to the first baseman. And again, foul. Ty Waller makes the nice play. Kurt Suzuki fouled off four with a couple of strikes. He got a 10 pitch at bat. Coco fouled off four again with two strikes. Hernandez reaches down and grabs it. And that is out number two. Friday, July the 15th, before the A's take on the Angels, sixth annual dog day presented by Abaderm Natural. Bring your dog to the Coliseum. The run begins at 5.30 p.m. and each pup will receive a goodie bag from Abaderm. Register online by Monday, July the 11th. For more information, go to openathletics.com slash dog day. Godzilla still waiting for number 500. Better than the panda, huh? <laughs> that Godzilla probably gets hot. Rubberized Godzilla mask. Grounded to the second baseman. Ackley has it. Three up, three down. Seven in a row retired by Hernandez. We're headed to the eighth.
and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Two nothing. It is the eighth inning here at the Coliseum. And when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Ziegler comes in. So Cahill goes seven innings tonight. He will not get the win. These are going to have to come back to avoid Cahill getting the loss. But he pitched very well. There you go seven innings give up one earned run. You should have a win. Not be worried about picking up the loss. There's five hits. The one earned run and. 101 pitches. Weeks grabs it. Greg Holman is 0 for 3 with three ground outs, and that's one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Now batting, number 51, Ichiro Suzuki. So, top of the order, and Suzuki, who has had a good series. He was 2 for 4 last or yesterday, and he's 2 for 3 in tonight's game. So, 4 for 7. For weeks, two outs. Got a pretty good idea. No uh, weeks knows even though each row was running, the ball was hit hard, backed up, got a good hop, and quick release to his first baseman. And he said to Connor Jackson, sorry, the throw was offline a little bit. I guess perfectionist. Here's Brendan Ryan. Ryan a double in the first. He didn't do a double play in the third. He bounced out to the pitcher in the sixth. So he's two for seven in the series. Angels still leading the Tigers one to nothing in the seventh inning. Verlander and Heron. Pitcher's duel down in Anaheim. And that run scored when run was at first. He was going to third. The throw came into second. He scored. And that's yep. it. The always aggressive Angels. Weeks charges. Throws quickly on the run. Ryan's out. Three up, three down inning for Brad Ziegler. Bottom of the eighth. Hernandez coming back out. Two nothing Mariners.
game summary brought to you by Toyota. Good pitchers duel tonight. Cahill, number one, seven innings, gave up just one earned run. But Felix Hernandez has been just a little bit better. Seven shutout innings so far with nine strikeouts. An unearned run in the second, and then this Dustin Ackley solo home run in the seventh. And that is your scoring, folks. For the Mariners, two runs, five hits, no errors. For the A's, no runs, two hits, and just one error. Connor Jackson to lead it off. Felix Hernandez. He throws pitch number 102, and it's on the corner for a strike. Hernandez has retired seven in a row. Breaking ball and Jackson right off the end of the bat, and it's 0 2. DeJesus will be next, and then Suzuki. Very consistent throw on the first pitch strike, and then pretty much do what he wants to do, and get it right there. Very hard changeup. I don't think it was a foul ball, but no. Just a little with the hard changeup. I mean, that ball was going down just like a splitter. Connor was on it, and so he started running first. Then he said, "Oh, maybe I foul tipped it." Once he saw that Olivo dropped the ball, so here is David De Jesus, swing and a miss on a high fastball. Tough to catch up with that one. I guess how do you take this guy out of the game? If you're a manager, pitching coach. Yeah, no. Hundred and twenty-eight is his season high. He's done that once. He's thrown hundred and twenty-seven. So he's done that once. He's thrown hundred and twenty-six twice. Pineda, who they're watching carefully, talked out at 106 and four times over 100. So you can see, as big and strong as he is, these two guys are going to be back to back. And Vargas pitching tomorrow. But if you can go half a season using just five starters, that's saying a lot. A's, unfortunately, have had some injuries that have caused them to bring some guys up, but they've done an exceptional job filling in for injured players. Hernandez, after getting ahead 0 1, it throws three straight balls, so goes for a little walk. On the ground to second. Ackley handles the tough hop, and that is out number two. Shook off to go to a 94 mile an hour fastball. So here's Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki has a base hit in the third, and then he struck out looking in the fifth. Breslow's been throwing, so he's. Ready, and it looks like he will get the top of the ninth inning. Maybe the A's can get a two out rally going against Hernandez. 111 pitches now. I think he's not going to give up a lot of home runs, but he's facing a club that doesn't hit a lot anyway, so it has to strain together some hits to be able to do it. Maybe driven not. to left. Baguero's going back. He's at the wall and he leaps and he cannot get it. And that's a home run. Suzuki hits home run number seven and it's two to one. Got a hit 
won Thursday against the Marlins in the ninth inning. This one coming in the eighth inning. 2 0 fastball. Surprising that he challenged the ball tailed back right into the swing of Kurt Suzuki. A line drive. And I didn't think there's any doubt when he left his bat, yet Figueroa went back and almost caught it. So here is Sweeney. So the A's are on the board with the Suzuki home run. Figueroa did the wall stop him? If he goes close. all the way back to the wall and straight up, he might have caught it. He kind of drifted into the wall. In there to Sweeney. One and one the count. Sweeney has struck out twice. The thing about I think Sernan has not given up a lot of home runs because he normally in the fastball count does not throw a true fastball. He did that time and Kurt Suzuki he was up for the challenge. So Sweeney trying to keep the inning going after the Suzuki home run. Very close. So two and two. Take that time by Sweeney. The channel Channel Suzuki two and no three and two. Of course, he has not come anywhere close with anything but off speed pitches. Just have to be ready if you can get a fastball. And that's hit hard in the left field for a base hit. And it was a fastball up and away. That's it. You might as well get ready for it. The other pitches are tough to hit. Up and away. And Ryan Sweeney, his patented opposite field hit. Not surprising, and that's just good hitting. Taking the pitch away from him, going to the opposite field. Shortstop, number two, Pennington. So Pennington steps in. Now there will be action in the bullpen. Jamie Wright. You notice how relievers will start to warm up with a glass of water or a yeah. cup of water and they'll set it down on the mound and they'll warm up and as they come in they'll take a last swallow. Who started that? I don't know. Seems like a lot of guys do it now. Really? Yeah. See there it is. It's about half full. And the key is to warm up and not kick it over. That's when you know. <laughs> That's when you know you're, you're talented. Good. Yeah, yeah, you're talented. And if Jamie Wright's called in, he will pick that cup yes, up and he finish will. it. Finish yeah. it. And then yeah. He's ready to go. And not even find a garbage can to put the, the empty cup in. <laughs> you want to make Clay Wood mad? <laughs> not picking up your garbage. <laughs> Andrew Bailey is starting to. Uh, there's Joy Devine. Andrew would be up if the A's could score again. Even better take the lead. First pitch to Pennington is low. Check this way. You know what would be good? Here's a stolen base. Yep. Yeah. Two outs, get the score in position. There is Joy Devine along with Craig Breslow. It's two and up. 120 pitches for Felix Hernandez trying to get through the eighth. A's trying to extend the eighth. He started this eighth with the idea of getting through the ninth. Got a strikeout and then a ground ball to second. And all of a sudden a home run and a 3 2 base hit to left field. Pennington helped him out, yep. swung at ball three. Lead 
Not a real big lead. He's not going anywhere. And there's a one hopper. Ryan backs up, goes to second just in time. Kurt Suzuki with a home run. So the A's are on the board. We are going to the ninth. That should be exciting. The Mariners, two. The A's one. Here's our Subway Eat Fresh Ask Glenn and Ray question. Can we please see the Chris Jambliss pennant winning home run? Probably. Yeah. I, I think we're going to be able to do that. That would be a good one to see. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and smog experts. Breslow comes in for the second game in a row. It's amazing. We just talked about that and somebody sent in a question and wanted to see it. Get it to us. Get the question to us. We'll take care of it. So Breslow, 0 and 2 with a 3.13 ERA, game number 37 for Breslow. So he's been busy again this year. For the A's, this is game number 87. Kennedy, Smoke, and Ackley. And two will pitch is in first strike. Kennedy 0 for 2 with a walk. The walk came in the sixth inning. And now it's 2 and 2. Brandon League starting to throw. Just a cup of water. This is much closer to the rubber than Jamie Wright's was. But he stands farther to the other side, yeah, so it's true. less likely he will knock it over. Who started that? <laughs> you know, I, mean, I didn't. Now you me think it. Well, I, I thought you guess, had the answer. With no, you. I have an idea. Oh, now that's that's different. But I think Francisco Rodriguez, when he was okay. with the Angels, he was one of the first that I remember because it was kind of his routine where he would take the cup only. He wouldn't drink all of it. Take it half full and then fire the other half and then oh, throw right. the cup and come in and all safe. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. But yeah, here it is. Out. Here it is. Chris Chambers. And this ball's gone and just watch the fans. That was the game winner. Celebrate and look at this. Your celebration's over, Snatcher, because look at that. Ouch. <laughs> there he is, a few years later. Still remembers it though. He can talk about it and tell it just like it happened yesterday. Smoke goes the other way. He's got a base hit. One of the, another former Cleveland Indian that went to the New York Yankees. Greg Nettles, then Chris Chambliss.
Watch, look at the guy behind. First base, got it, and I'm out of here. He was on the subway by the time Chris Chambers got to home. <laughs> and it was on eBay. <laughs> Did they have eBay back then? Probably not. No. I get what you're trying to say. <laughs> Breslow gives up the hit, so he's going to come on out. And Joey Devine is coming in to face Ackley. comes in and Devine is going to face Ackley. After Ackley it'll be Olivo. Now batting, so Smoke at first with one out. The A's desperately trying to keep this the two to one deficit. The Mariners are thinking we could sure use an insurance run. A similar situation for Joey Devine against the Diamondbacks came in to face the lefty Drew and then Upton. After the Diamondbacks Johnson hit a two run home run. Ackley. The home run is last at bat. And that was a no doubt. That was against Trevor Cahill, the righty. Just missed. Ackley with a very upright stance. Side again, and now it's three and one. In the ninth inning, these were at the top of the order. Weak size, more crisp. Matsui, Jackson, De Jesus. Maybe they'll all get an at bat. And that one is inside, and it's a walk. Well, it might not have been that far off the plate. It just so happened, though, to be the opposite direction. Where Kurt Suzuki was. Uh, I think Bob Mellon's want to know where the pitch was because it did, wasn't too low. So two on one out. Here's Olivo. And of course, Suzuki is set up in the pitch towards the inside. Just the fact he had to reach as far as he did. I bet it wasn't that far off the plate. Let's see. Nope. It's actually a corner strike and. Surprisingly, unfortunately, at times, the umpire will watch the catcher move as much as Kurt had to from one side to the other. I think the good umpires are the ones that call the strike regardless of where the catcher set up. Oh, for three night for Olivo. Waves at that one. He's had a good power year his first year with the Mariners. 12 home runs and 38 runs batted in. Smoke at second, Ackley at first. One out. Oh, 
Waves on another breaking ball. Not close to it. He's trying to hit 13th. It's a pitch he can't even reach. That one way off the plate. Good catch, good block by Kurt Suzuki, keeping the double play in order. This time, breaking ball. Maybe got a little bit more of the plate than Divine wanted, but Olivo just dribbles it foul. I think if there's one pitch that's making it difficult to throw a bad pitch, it would be a breaking pitch because you want to throw it for a strike. And the pitch before that was so far off the plate was more of an accident from Divine. It ended up being a strike because Olivo couldn't reach it. That's the pitch you want to try to waste and get the chase. The fastball, you have better control. The tendency to hang a breaking pitch a little bit more consistently than a, a good fastball. Gets him with the breaking ball again. So big strikeout, and that's out number two. Well, he went back to the slider out of the strike zone. And again, Olivo chased it with no chance to make contact. Now batting, number eight, Carlos Figueroa. That's a good idea. He did not see the spin of the breaking ball. So here is Carlos Piguero. Piguero had the sacrifice fly and he swings at a pitch that was about two to three feet inside. Almost hit him in the right, it almost left hit knee. Him. Yep. I mean, at some point, Ray, I mean, this guy like this swings hard, and that's great. At some point, though, you have to have a little pitch recognition. I mean, he's pitch yeah. swinging at pitches that are, like, not even close. So it's 0 2. Well, I mean, there's a there's bad ball hitters, and then there's. Well, there's, there's a point in time, will you ever see anything but, but a breaking pitch out of the strike zone? You go through the scouting reports, don't give him a strike with any pitch. 2 rolls that one foul breaking ball down and in Brandon League is just standing on the bullpen mound he has finished warming up and of course he'll get another six or seven when he gets to real mound. Pitch just missed by Divine. One and two. This one down the left field line, a long run for Sweeney, and he slides, cannot quite get it, it drops foul. Heck of a try by Ryan Sweeney. Great effort on surgically repaired knees. Going into the warning track, sliding hard, buckling the right knee under him, and slamming into the wall. Fortunately, it's padded. Cliff Clavin said, my work's cut out for me before tomorrow's <laughs> game. And a rip. Yeah, it'll be sparkling. Yeah, he may need some new pants. <laughs> he may just throw those away. One, two. Got him swinging. Ball in the dirt. Suzuki will flip to first. Side retired. So the Mariners strand a pair. Here it is, folks. Bottom of the ninth. He's trailing two to one.
of the most live sports. And by Chevrolet. Go to ChevyBaseball.com to support youth baseball and help make a moment kids will never forget. Bottom of the ninth, folks. A's need one to tie, two to win it. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. The closer Brandon Lee comes in. He got the save in yesterday's game. He's back out there tonight. The first pitch is a strike down around the knees. League threw 18 pitches yesterday and picking up his save. No one pitch to the leadoff man, Jemiah Weeks, as well. So Hernandez, 122 pitches in eight innings. No walks in 10 strikeouts. Uh, Coco Crisp got on yesterday, stole second with the strike three to Hideki Matsui, giving uh, Chris Carter the opportunity to try to drive him in. And that'd be great if Jamal Weeks could get on. Do the same thing. He slices one fair, headed for the corner, and Piguero cannot pick it up, and it's going to be a leadoff double. That's better than a single to stolen base. The ball got caught down there in the corner, not in the corner, but right along the sidewall. Well, he let off the game with a hit, stole second, but overslid the bag this time. Got the fastball, sliced it in the left field corner, and uh, hit the security guard. He tried. <laughs> He's dancing all over the place. It found him though. Bumper pool off the wall, off his legs, chair getting out of the way. Get that. <laughs> So here's Sizemore. Well, the A's can play for their tie. Lasted back. Andrew Bailey starting to get loose. Cup of water. Sizemore bunts it. Olivo picks it up. He'll throw the first in time. So a very nice sacrifice by Sizemore. And now the tying run is at third with one out. Now ready. Well, just trying to get him over and a very good sacrifice. Only one play. Third baseman charges. The catcher fielded it. Now the infield will play in. The outfield playing shallow, especially in left field. The Piguero is playing very shallow. So here's Coco Crisp. And there's a pop up, shallow left. Pagaro coming in, still coming in, slides, and he dropped it. And Weeks scores, and this game is tied. Pagaro had it, and he dropped it. Well, the great news he dropped it because if he catches it, Jamal Weeks was down the line, probably too far to get back. The slide, the big guy went into the slide, but as he hit the ground, it just off the heel of the glove. And Jamal Weeks going down the line. No, he got, look, 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 and then took off and was able to score. So maybe not as far down the line, but he did score, and now Coco Crisp. Exactly the same situation as yesterday. He waited until his two strikes on Matsui before stealing. See if he goes earlier in tonight's game. Ideally, get at second base where Matsui and the next batter will have a chance to drive him in. Runner goes. Throw the second base is in time, and wow. Chris is out. What well, perfect throw! And that was perfect. Right on the bag. I believe, of course, throws great, had a very good pitch. He stayed with the fastball, first pitch, and right on the bag and put the tag down. And that's it. But he got the hit to drive in the tying run, had a great jump, but that's where the ball outran the runner. Stood right into it. So Godzilla gets your 500th. 1 0 pitch. Yeah. 1 and 1. Felix Hernandez, maybe too many pitches in the eighth inning, no chance to come out in the ninth. And 
He goes away with a no decision as does Trevor Cahill. A long save for Brandon Lee. Just a bit low, two and one. <laughs> oh, for three for Hideki Matsui. The A's have tied it here in the ninth. The inside into the backstop. So the inning continues. How many rolls of film do you think the Japanese photographers have shot Man. with every swing that he has taken How since he's hit his 499? <laughs> I bet when they go, I think it was roll. June 16th. Is that right? <laughs> June 16th is the day he hit his last home run. It's a lot of film. There are a lot of digitals. <laughs> yeah. A lot of memory cards. Pitch to Connor Jackson he is a strike. So a double a sacrifice. A single off Pagaro's glove. Caught stealing and a walk. And he is a tied it here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Weeks with a lead off double. Jackson a line. Drive. Piguero is right there. He's got it. Side retired. A's get the tying run on a couple of hits. So we got extra innings from the O.co Coliseum. This is the bottom of the ninth. It started with that double by Weeks. And then he was sacrificed to third. So a runner at third, one out. And then Coco Crisp, he's catching a little bit of a break here. Piguero comes in, slides, cannot hold on to it. And that is how this game was tied. That's our Fremont Bank plays of the game. So 10th inning in the 2 2 game. Bailey comes in. And it's time for a change. The speedy oil change in tuna. It's your oil change tuna and smog experts. And the closer comes in. Gutierrez. 
swings at the first fastball, takes the next one, and he's quickly behind in the count 0 and 2. Back to back 95 mile hour fastballs from Andrew Bailey. We would love to pitch a little bit more consistently, but the A's not taking a lot of leads into the ninth inning. So the tenth inning, he comes in to try to take it to the bottom half, try to win it. Skipper's happy. 15 extra inning game for the Athletics. Breaking ball to the backstop. So it's been Cahill, Ziegler, Breslow, Devine, and now Bailey. Fuentes, De Los Santos, Wurtz still in the bullpen for the Athletics. Gutierrez to be followed by Holman and then Ichiro. Another pop up foul. This should reach the seats in a room. And it ready to throw him more of a true slider now. This last couple of years, a cut fastball. It's still thrown very hard. Good to see the velocity. What was prior to his surgery last winter and, of course, in spring and rehab. Going very hard. Grounded in the left center field, the base hit. Gutierrez, a big turn, and he stops. Now the Mariners get the leadoff hitter aboard here in the tenth. Number 56. Started 0 and 2 with a swing and a miss and a called strike, and then the breaking ball just not very sharp. To the outside part of the plate, maybe a little bit too much, and Abel Gutierrez to speed up his bat. So here's Hallman. Bunny to the backstop. How about a two hit shutout for Dan Heron? Yeah. Angels win one to nothing over the Tigers. Heron beats Verlander. Two hit shutout for Danny Heron. So Heron gets his ninth win. He's nine and five. Verlander takes the loss. He's eleven and four. Angels are hot. Put it in the air and the dive by Jackson. Cannot quite get it. Good effort by Connor Jackson. Is playing shallow. Actually holding the runner on, then breaking in. It's not able to reach out far enough. Are we having the day after the 4th of July fireworks yeah, in the background? Going. Hope that's what it is. Holman, <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Swings and misses, so two failed bunt attempts and a swinging strikeout for Holman. He's 0 for 4. That's the worst fit in the world. Had to go back to the dugout after missing two bunts and then. So why does he have to Number throw 51. me a perfect strike He's to the outside wrong. corner? Too close Suzuki. to take. No chance to hit it. So three ground outs and a strikeout for Holman hitting in the ninth spot. So here's Ichiro Suzuki, who is two for four. Suzuki now 98 hits on the year. See, that's the cut fastball that he's hitting about 220 this year. Yeah. It's 429 in the last three years. Of course, if it's heading towards his knee, he's going to swing and try to get out of the way, especially as hard as beat, uh, Bailey throws. Yeah. Runner goes. The throw to second base is just a bit late. And Gutierrez has a stolen base. Pitch was called the ball. So that's a big 90 feet. 
to see some managers that with a closer they will not hesitate in sending the runner. Big leg kick by Bailey. Now they're going to walk each year. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's tough to pitch carefully to Suzuki. Each row it just. There's a sign the manager will give toward his finger. Pitch around him, pitch him carefully. Forget it. This guy can cover so much of the plate, off the plate. Sets up a double play. Well, a late slide by Gutierrez going to feet first pop up slide and like he banged his right knee hard. Left ankle, left knee. Now batting, number 26. Brendan Ryan. So here's Brendan Ryan, two on, one out here in the tenth. Pitch up and in a little bit. Ryan fouled it straight back. Ryan's very aggressive. We have seen him in this series. We saw him at the beginning of the season. Usually does not get cheated. Weeks charges. Flip to second for one, back to first, and the throw is wide, and the Mariners are going to take the lead. It either hit Suzuki or Cliff Pennington did not have a very good grip. And I just wonder how Suzuki came into second base because the throw, it looked like it was deflected off the runner. A flip to second by Weeks. See where Ichiro is. He would. Did he go out of the baseline? Now batting, number four, Adam Kennedy. That's interference. That is interference. First base umpire should call that because he could not reach back to the bag to touch second. So the air has allowed the Mariners to take the lead. You have to be able to touch second base if you're the runner. You can't go out so far. That way it looks like, but the other angle we had, look at each row reaching back. I didn't tell did it hit him. Well, it hit something. Yeah. Yeah, and it. So the runner, Ryan, at second now with two outs. Kennedy goes around, and that pitch was way inside. So an air helped the Mariners get the run in the second inning, and the air helps them get a run here in the tenth. So two costly airs by the Athletics. Kennedy swings at another pitch way out of the strike zone and fouls it back. If you take a look at Suzuki on this angle, he has to reach second base. Can he? As he slides. He goes after him. He look how far he's off the line. Off the bag at second base. That's interference to go that far out of the baseline to go after an infield. He got away with it. That's and the ball matters. did not hit him. No, the ball hit nothing. It he just did. Pennington just looks like he held on to it. Kind of, I don't know. It's kind of strange. And he didn't have a grip. There's no doubt he didn't have a grip on it because the way the ball, I thought when he, the way it deflected, it had to have hit Suzuki or something, but he didn't even make contact. Kennedy loops one down the left field line. Fair. Ryan's going to score. Kennedy's going to try for second, and he's going to make it with a sliding double. It's four to two, Seattle. Kennedy just kind of reached out, poked it to left. That ball was just up enough that he could do that.
Now batting. So here's Smoke. So a very disappointing inning for the A's. Two hits. Intentional walk and the costly air. Smoke had the hit in the ninth inning, but was stranded. But Jamie Wright looks like he's going to be the guy that will try to save it for the Mariners. The A's will have DeJesu, Suzuki, and Sweeney in the bottom of the tenth. That one called the strike. Smoke thought it was low. One and two the count. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Smoke misses it, but damage done. The Mariners score twice, so we go to the bottom of the tenth for two Seattle. CSN Athletics with the hashtag at Return of the Mac. And you could receive an answer tonight during A's post game live. CSNCalifornia.com, your interactive home for A's baseball all season long. Henry and Shooting standing by for A's post game live back in the studio. We hope that they have to wait a little while. Or the A's get another rally in them. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. Jamie Wright comes in. He will face DeJesus, Suzuki, and Sweeney. He has a chance for a save. First pitch is a strike. Wright, always been kind of known, a good sinker, a hard sinker. Jesus, 0 for 2, he's hit by a pitch, bunts it. Kennedy on the run, throws out to Jesus. So one out here in the bottom of the 10th. He always tried to deaden the ball, and unfortunately, David bunted the ball too hard, and Kennedy's played well. Started at second base and moved to third. And on the move, on the mound, made a play. So here's Kurt Suzuki who has had a good night. Kurt singled in the third and then the home run in the eighth got the A's in the board. It's a strike outside corner. Curveball breaks down and away. away. 
So Hernandez eight innings. The league blows the save in the ninth. Right ahead of the count. Well, unfortunately, when you tie game and you're last at bat, in this case the A's, and you take an extra innings and you have the last at bat, usually favors the home team. But the A's are going to have to come back again if they want to try to win this one. To the shortstop, Ryan throws two outs. So now it's up to Sweeney to just do anything to get aboard. Now batting left fielder number 15, Ryan Sweeney. Well, the A's have been down to their last out a couple times this year and rallied back. And they're up against it here in the bottom of the tenth. First pitch right down the middle. That's a strike. Sweeney is one for three, a single and a couple of strikeouts. Big overhand curve, and it's 0 2. That one off the foot of Sweeney as he hangs in there. Another 0 2. Fastball, swing and a miss, and that's the ball game. So, a very disappointing finish to this one. The A's tied it in the ninth, but the Mariners bounce right back and get two in the top of the tenth. And they have won the first two games of this series. The final score tonight the Mariners four and the A's two.